as we give. Early on Easter morning, the angel, which means messenger, announced what he knew to be true. The tomb was empty because Christ had risen. The women were initially overcome with fear, as anyone would be if confronted by a holy herald from a god. Their visible eyes would not see our Lord until he revealed himself. But we have given the angels' eyes as if it were, for by faith we see our Lord with us now. The news of the angel proclaimed is too good to keep to ourselves. As God's messengers today, it is our turn to tell the world that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Now upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a fallen ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, 
for his steadfast love endures forever. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. And the right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high and on earth. Peace, goodwill for men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, and we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy in the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our first reading for this beautiful Easter Sunday is taken from Job 19, starting at verse 23. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead, they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for this Easter Sunday is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 15. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if the dead has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. 
But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of God, the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to destroy is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who, who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him. Who put all things in subjection under him? that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what do people mean by being baptized on behalf of the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized on their behalf? Why are we in danger every hour? I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die every day. What do I gain if, humanly speaking, I fought with beasts at Ephesus. If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Wake up from your drunken stupor, as is right, and do not go on sinning, for some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly one is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for star from star differ in glory. So it is it with the resurrection of the dead, what is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is a law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on that first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us for the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back as very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell the disciples and Peter they're going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb. For trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. We make profession of our faith the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits there at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I have to say this is a kind of a strange experience, but rejoice in the Lord that we're able to still celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For indeed, that is the hope that he has given to us, hope that does not disappoint, hope that we know that just as Christ was raised from the dead, so we too will walk in the newness of life. So again, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Most gracious and loving God, we pray that you indeed would continue to be with us, and that indeed in the hope of the resurrection from the dead, that we know that not even COVID-19 can separate us from your love and from your mercy, from your words and for your promises. And so be with us this day. God's grace, his mercy, and his peace are yours in Christ Jesus, dear Christian friends. It is now that we bring conclusion to that which was begun on Ash Wednesday as we embarked upon the series known as Eyes on Jesus. And particularly our focus for today is Angel Eyes. This, of course, based upon the gospel lesson uh, that was shared just a few moments ago. The phrase angel eyes will conjure up many different thoughts based upon your age and upon your interests. Throughout the first several decades, that indeed there have been various songs and various types of genre that have held the title angel eyes. When I thought about this and preparing for the sermon, for whatever reason, my mind went to the Clint Eastwood movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly of which it is the one who is the bad, his nickname was Angel Eyes, ascribed to him by the one who was known as the ugly. But for now, push all those other kinds of angel eyes out of your mind, since today you and I should focus on only one set of angel eyes. Through those eyes, see the greatest sight of the world that has ever seen. I'm talking about the eyes of the Easter angel in the empty tomb of Jesus. It's funny that we call it the empty tomb, since St. Mark's account uh, depicts the tomb being a bit overcrowded on that first Easter Sunday. The two Marys and Salome were shocked to discover the large stone rolled away from the tomb, and they went inside to investigate. They were startled to find not a dead Jesus inside, but a young man dressed in white, an angel of the Lord. Their alarm was most likely twofold. First, they were distressed that there was no Jesus to be found. And second, angels of the Lord can be very scary. Despite what you see in figurines and artistic depictions, God's angels usually appear as majestic creatures who strike fear into the hearts of the onlookers. It is no wonder that they are greeted with the words by the angel, don't be afraid. On Easter morning, this is exactly what happens. The angel says to the terrified women, do not be alarmed, do not be afraid. They don't need to fear this angel since he has come in peace, the bearer of good news. The word we translate as angel means messenger. So bringing the gospel is his main job. He announces that they don't need to fear what happened to the body of Jesus because he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The angel continues, you seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they have laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he had told you. The angel directs the women to see their own eyes, uh, with their own eyes, that Jesus isn't there. And then he explains what his own eyes have witnessed. He knows that they are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. Another way of translating this is the crucified one, which is very significant. The women had gazed upon Jesus' suffering for the sin of the whole world under his father's wrath upon the cross. They had looked on as Joseph of Arimathea had buried Jesus, but that's not all they had seen. 
The, uh, but that's all they had seen. The angel, however, had seen the resurrected Jesus with his own eyes, and he still calls him the crucified one. Later that afternoon, Jesus would appear to ten of his apostles and prove his identity by showing them the nail and spear scars in his hands and side. The next Sunday, Jesus invites doubting Thomas to touch those scars, which turns into him, he, uh, turns him into believing as Thomas cries out and says concerning the crucified one, my Lord and my God. Still later, St. Paul would encounter the risen Jesus on the road to Damascus and then would write to Corinthians, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul characterized his preaching to the Galatians by writing these words, It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Now you might be thinking, this is Easter, why is he still so focused upon the crucifixion? Because the cross must also be, the also must always be, must always be the focal point of our theology. A God who has not been crucified on your behalf would do you no good. Look through the angel's eyes and see that Jesus is the crucified one. Put to death for your sins. The cross is our life. St. Paul wrote, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Those words recorded in Galatians chapter 2. He also would write, Far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. That also found in Galatians chapter 6. Of course the resurrection is essential too. You also need to see through the angel's eyes that Jesus was raised on Easter for your justification. Good Friday and Easter are like a two-sided coin. You can't buy anything with a one-sided quarter. Jesus couldn't pay for your salvation only by dying or only by living, but by both. He had to actively obey God's law on your behalf and passively suffer your sins against the law. He had to actively fight Satan, whom you couldn't defeat, and die for all the times that you have fallen by the devil's temptation. He had to go into the grave and deposit all your sins there. But he had to come out alive in order to grant you forgiveness of sins to impart his righteousness. And after his resurrection, Jesus continues to pattern established on um, the first Easter by hiding himself from the sight of his disciples and by using angels to proclaim his death and resurrection. Though you are like the women of the tomb and cannot see Jesus with your own eyes, the reliable testimony of the Easter angel recorded in scriptures is precious gospel that you should keep before your eyes at all times. Though Jesus remains hidden from the physical sight, he has continued to send angels ever since his resurrection to testify to his presence among us. No, I'm not talking about angels from heaven but by messengers of which God sends out into the world, this being pastors and proclaimers of the world. Following the pattern, for instance, of John the Baptist, who was even called by God himself, his angel, his messenger. After his resurrection, Jesus sent his apostles out to, as his angels, his messengers, to preach the good news to the whole creation. And those angel apostles appointed everywhere they were, uh, went, pastors and teachers, to continue sharing the good news of Good Friday and Easter. Just as the heavenly angel Gabriel visited Mary with the wonderful news that the Lord was with her in the incarnation, now earthly angels or messengers proclaim to all who believe and are baptized that the Lord Jesus is with them to the end of the age. 
Just as the angel of the Lord brought glad tidings of great joy for the people and the shepherds at Christmas, now earthly angels proclaim the glad tidings of great joy that Christ has died for all, is for the sin of the world, and has risen to declare all human righteousness so that they may be saved by believing the message. There was nothing particularly angelic about Christ's apostle then or about Christian pastors today. We are, quite honestly, a pretty sorry lot. Nobody would look at me and say, he's got angel eyes. But what apostles and pastors of Christ do have are beautiful feet. That not literally, but according to the prophet Isaiah, the apostle Paul had written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. In other words, the footsteps of angels who preach the gospel to us are beautiful because they proclaim the beautiful message of Christ. And Paul would continue, faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. Romans chapter 10. Today receive this word of Christ through the messenger he has called to preach to you. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven you. Baptized into his death and resurrection, you are now clothed with his righteousness, which grants eternal salvation. In the sacrament of Holy Communion, we receive his true body, we drink his true blood, offered and spilled for us for the forgiveness of sins. It is no wonder that after we have received communion that oftentimes we sing the song of Simeon. The song of Simeon, that being, my eyes have now, or now, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. My eyes have seen your salvation. What a wonderful blessing that we have there. What a wonderful blessing that we have that even before it is that we receive the sacrament, we join with the angelic voices and we go forth with angels and archangels and with all the company of it, we sing glorious honor to our almighty God, to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. What a wonderful gift that we have in our liturgy. On Easter, the angel told the women when they, where they could find Jesus. Likewise today, I have the same message. Jesus has promised you that you may find him in his holy word and in his sacraments. May your eyes stay always fixed upon Jesus Christ, crucified for your sin and raised up for your salvation. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
only at this time of the service that we would be receiving an offering. And again, I simply want to give thanks for the many of you who have been so wonderful in sending your offerings to your respective congregations so that the ministry might continue to go forward unencumbered. And so thank you for that. We now would turn our hearts to prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we rejoice today that you, our Redeemer, live and will stand upon the earth in the last day. Grant that after our skin has been destroyed, yet in our flesh and with our own eyes, we shall see you, the eternal God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us daily fix our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before you endured the cross, despising the shame, and are seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the glorious rest be that we shall not all sleep in death, but be resurrected in the last trumpet. Give us confidence that our mortal bodies will put on immortality, and death will be swallowed up in victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the Marys sought to treat your body with love and respect, so also may we remember your body, live, uh, live, uh, body alive, lives of, of love and service toward one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Easter angels proclaim the glorious news that you are risen indeed. Hallelujah. Grant that we likewise might share the gospel with others, and that your messengers today would point to you, the crucified one, as the source of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you bade the disciples to go to the place where you would meet them in Galilee, may we follow your guidance to the places where your promises, uh, to, where you promised to meet us. Your holy word, holy baptism, holy absolution, and the holy sacrament, the Lord's Supper. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for destroying death and bringing to light our eternal hope through your resurrection. Continue to look upon us with favor that we, along with your whole church on earth, might find rest, peace, and resurrection in you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with thy spirit. Bless be the Lord. Thanks be to God. And receive the blessing of Almighty God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Just a few announcements that I want to be able to share. You must well admit, dear friends, that it's uh, been quite an interesting Holy Week and Easter celebration. I do look forward to the day once again, as I've mentioned before, that we can be worshiping in person and that we once again can be celebrating the Lord's Supper as a family of God, His intention for us as we assemble around His means of grace, His Holy Word and His sacrament. In this next coming week, another letter will be coming out. I'm hoping to be able to take and share with you a, a glimmer of hope when it is that we might be able to come back into the houses of the Lord. Most certainly on Sunday, April the 19th, we will still have a videotape service because under the order of stay at home, we're not able to take and uh, meet together as of yet. And so it is that we'll keep you informed to the best of our ability. If there is any, any, uh, ever any question, please check the respective websites of uh, Trinity Lutheran Church in Oshkosh 
a Peace Lutheran Church in Enoch, as we try to keep those as updated as possibly can, so that you might know and be aware of what's happening. One of the things that I want you to prepare yourself for, each congregation, each family of faith, and that is when it is that the great light is given and that we can come back into the house of the Lord to worship, we are going to need an army of people to sanitize the facilities so that they are ready and prepared for worship. Now they have been maintained. However, it is that we want to give it a good uh, 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 cleaning so that indeed uh, uh, be well protected to the best of our ability. I want to give thanks again to the many who have been participating to see to it that these services could come forward. Most we'll certainly want to give thanks to Tim Hurley, who gives much of his time in preparing these services and in editing them and getting them out in a timely manner. For Kathy Ehlert and for Brian Holman uh, back at uh, Peace for their labors during the midweek services and getting those recordings done, and then also for uh, bringing things forward and getting them on the website peace. For the men who have volunteered their time either dressing the altar for the various services, for those who have volunteered time for, for lecturing and reading lessons for us, what a wonderful blessing. This is what the family of God does for the sake of being angels, for the sake of being messengers of the gospel, to Christ's honor and to his glory. And so God be with you in this Easter and I close out this service by simply saying the beautiful Easter greeting, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs>